All right, guys. Uh, as you uh, as you see, we've got uh, 52 slides here and 45 minutes to, to give them, so we, we're going to get started. Uh, thanks thanks very much for coming to, to this talk. Uh, it's uh, hope hope that you're in the right place. Uh, the the talk is using Blackfire to profile Drupal loading time. So this is about Drupal backend performance. Um, we're Alex Durgachev and Dave Vasilevsky from from Evolving Web. Um, somebody uh, somebody gave me some marketing advice and said I should include an about the speakers slide, so here it is. Uh, there we are. Uh, and uh, so about Evolving Web, we're, we're a small and scrappy uh, Drupal development shop up in Montreal. We've been doing this for, for a number of years, since Drupal 06 just came out and was in exactly the same phase as Drupal 8 is now. Um, and uh, we've been very involved in, in Drupal cons and local events and trying to contribute when we can. Uh, we, we, we do content migration, multilingual, responsive, all the usual stuff, and, and we try to do, uh, you know, larger custom development projects as well. Uh, so Blackfire comes in handy for that. Uh, we've also got a great training program, and some of the customers we work with is Canadian federal government, lots of uh, university sites, uh, and, and just generally large organizations. Um, what we'll talk about here today is... Uh, just what is profiling? What does it mean? How do you do it? Uh, we're going to do a demo of, of the tool that we love to use, Blackfire.io. Hi, George. Uh, and uh, because you're not here for a marketing talk about a tool, you're here for learning how to actually use it with Drupal. We'll, we'll share what we, what we learned while applying it to some Drupal projects. Um, so, so the first section is just motivating. Uh, you probably already know that loading time is very important. That's why you're here. Uh, let's see. So there's, uh, there's the user experience angle. I mean, people like me are incredibly impatient. If a page is taking too long to load, I just hit back right away and go to the next Google result. Uh, obviously, there's a concurrency and scalability angle. Um, so if, you're, if your page is loading slowly and you get a huge influx of visitors, which is your goal, right, when you're making a web website, uh, you don't want it to crash. And, of course, the first thing you're going to think is throw more hardware at it. And that's a smart move in the era of, of cheap hardware and cloud and all that. But that has a limit. And also, the moment you're, you start like going from one server handling all the requests to multiple servers, so multiple app heads or uh, a, a DB server or a replication, that, that right away adds a lot more complexity and makes your life a lot more difficult. So you don't want to do that until you have to. And it's better to stay lean and mean. Uh, there's, uh, there's definitely financial implications on both the previous points. Uh, I don't need to tell you that. But an interesting thing is, uh, is uh, if you, you probably don't, don't know this, but Google's main innovation at the very start wasn't just coming up with a better search algorithm, this page rank thing that we all heard about. What it was is their version of page rank was uh, performant. They were able to do things that other guys just couldn't do because the web was too big to calculate this by having a, a sampling distribution of, uh, like, you know, they, they looked at which sites is linking here and there uh, to each other, and they were able to do it in a non-deterministic way with, with random sampling, and they were able to do it faster. And that's for that reason that in the first, uh, in the first five, six years of using Google, they would, uh, would put down this p search result rendered in 22 milliseconds on every single page. I mean, that was Google's in. That's how they got big. So hopefully uh, there's a lesson in there for us. Um, so first, uh, I want to I wanna reemphasize what profiling, like backend profiling, doesn't measure. It doesn't measure the overall browser rendering time, how long it takes to download the HTML, the CSS, render all that, run the JavaScript, fetch all the other images and assets. Uh, that's, that's not something that, that we're doing here. What we're doing is, is uh, kind of looking at your backend and looking at exactly what's making it slow. So I, I came up with this snappy slide. Profiling is like an x-ray for your for your code performance. Um, and it, it really looks at what is going on in the each function call, which one of them is taking longer, and, uh, and figure out how do I fix it. So what we're going to see is profiling gives you uh, time spent overall in the whole page and per function call. Uh, it, it shows you how much resources is being used for each function call, including uh, how much of the CPU how much of the wall time, uh, how much RAM, uh, 
overall how many DB queries are used, uh, also the, the network usage, and, and very importantly, disk usage as well. These are all the things that are going to make your, your site take time to render. And this is what you're trying to figure out what is going on, try to get that internal view. Uh, and uh, a profiler, like, like Blackfire, is a tool that hooks into the PHP engine and instruments a function, each function call. Now, instrumentation roughly means you adding manually at the start of each function call, micro time, and save that. And then at the end of each function call, micro time, save that, subtract the difference, and that's your sort of inclusive time. And then uh, for every nested function call, it measures that too and calculates all that. And, and, and a profiler gives you a, a big graph of that to analyze. Uh, so why is this important for Drupal? Well, Drupal is not the lightest web system out there. In a real world context, Drupal sites have a bunch of contrib modules, have uh, probably a bunch of custom code that some of you wrote, uh, and uh, realistically, uh, it's gonna be a hundred or a couple of hundred queries. It's, it might be 30 modules at the lightest end to 200 modules on the heavier end, or maybe even more. Uh, so Drupal sites in the real world tend to be kind of sluggish. And um, this is why a tool like Blackfire is particularly important. Uh, keep in mind that Core, Drupal Core, has a lot of eyeballs on it, so it has a lot of great optimizations already. So the, the, there's less low-hanging fruit in Drupal Core. Maybe now with Drupal 8 just having come out, there's some. Uh, but contrib modules, even five years after Drupal 7 was out, contrib modules have so many problems that no one's ever run a profile tool on them. Crazy, right? But it's true. So. Uh, and probably the same goes for your custom code base. I mean, if you, if you don't put that out there and people aren't using it, uh, unless you use the profiler uh, on it, then, then no one's done it. Just a poll of the audience, who here regularly, uh, or at least once, has run a profiler on their custom code? Pretty good, all right, great. So that's about two thirds of the people in this room. So, and who, has, who, who does this on a continuous basis? Who does it like, you know, every release? Okay, a lot less hands here. And uh, yeah, so, so this is in part because it's a bit of a hassle, in part because it ha takes time, in part because the existing tool isn't so user friendly, so you do it when you have to. So uh, hopefully that's beginning to change and, and you'll come away from this presentation being motivated to say, hey, this is easier and more fun than I thought, let me do it more. Great. Um, another thing to remember is a lot of the performance problems with Drupal are often uh, handled by sticking varnish in front of it, which is great because varnish is a super efficient cache, but, it's, but it clearly works in, a, in, a, in a, like a section of your use cases. I mean, most visitors will receive a fast page load, except the ones that don't. Or when you have a high traffic site and somebody clicks edit on a node and clicks save and all of a sudden your home page isn't loading anymore because all the caches just got expired. Uh, there's, there's the problems with cache stampede. Uh, if you have search and you let, or especially if you have a search driven UI, uh, that, that's gonna all throw off the varnish cache. And, uh, and so, and that goes without saying that it only works for uh, anonymous users, not for your, anyone who's logged in and has a cookie. Um, and generally, on a personal level, as a developer, working on a slow site is demoralizing. I mean, at the end of the day, no matter how cool the functionality you're building or how nice the design looks, if it just takes a while to load every single time, you're, you're just gonna be miserable. At least, uh, that's me. So, uh, I think this is my favorite uh, slide here. Uh, it's profiling summary. Like, what we did is we, we started using this uh, Blackfire profiling tool recently, and uh, both for a few of our existing projects that we we're doing now, and we even went back on a few recent projects and, and ran it to see if there's any dramatic uh, low-hanging fruit that we could report, and sure enough, there were. So take a look. For, for McGill University, there's a, there's a listing of all the programs and courses that students have to take to graduate. Um, that's a very lean site already. It was loading in three, 400 milliseconds max per page, but it turns out in one hour, we, we found a, a very easy uh, vestige of Drupal 6 that we never upgraded or changed it in Drupal 7 because it kept working, but it was a performance problem and saved 13% on every page load. Um, for a mysterious client uh, who, who shall ever name, remain nameless, uh, we've got uh, a very dramatic speed up on their home page for anonymous users, and that was not 300 milliseconds. That was over a second uh, on average. So, and, they, and that's been dogging them for years. Um, 
For, uh, for our own site in Drupal 8, take a look. We had a very dramatic core improvement. So we, sh we were able to shave off almost 20%, sorry, like around 20% of a page load. It's a light site. Uh, it took a lot of work because it was a Drupal core improvement and we're still trying to figure out how to make it so that it works not just for our site but for other sites and how to contribute that back. But this, this particular performance problem is dogging every Drupal 8 site out there and we'll talk about that later on. And, uh, and finally, for our Linux Foundation, last year we did a big internet project for device certifications, kind of the new Internet of Things standard. And, uh, and that was us, and that was pretty fast as well. Uh, but we did have one view that was slower than, than most of the other views, and, and we couldn't figure out why. And using this tool, we were able to, to shave, add a cache and shave a lot of time off. Uh, basically, node revisions are not really cached. There's no, like, proper, like views, node loading and entity loading is cached unless there's revisions involved. So we, we worked around that. So hopefully you're, you're motivated. That was the, the motivation section. Uh, the, the next section is, is our profile, profiling methodology. The same marketing consultant in the back of my head said we need more acronyms. So we came up with our methodology called MAFIA. All right, let's see what that means. Um, so M is for measure. Figure out exactly what you care about to measure. Use a, a benchmark tool like Chrome DevTools will show you like how long each page takes. Keep that open uh, as you browse your site, as you browse other sites, and as you browse the web to connect your intuition, what's a fast site and a slow site, to the actual number that it's giving for backend loading time. That's, that's a trick that's gonna take you probably a week or two to do on a passive basis. Uh, and then you'll have an intuition for what's slow and what's fast. Uh, also keep in mind that some, some pages are cached, some pages are not. Uh, sometimes there's, you're logged in, sometimes you're not. Exactly what URL you're looking at, whether there's a, there's a redirect involved. So there's subtle things that you're gonna be paying attention to and benchmarking uh, on an outside in kind of view. Um, also keep in mind that when you're comparing things, you can vary a given page of a site, site to site, server environment, like maybe it's slow on dev but fast on prod, maybe it's fast on dev, slow on prod. Uh, what else is running on that server at the same time? Um, also, another good benchmarking high-level trick is just disabling some modules. If you're like trying to figure out what's going on, that's good to vary things up like that. And, uh, and, and of course, for measuring, uh, you're going to use a profiler to actually figure out what part of your code is slow. Is it the, the database queries that we're running? Is it some web request? Is it some inefficient calculation that I should be caching? And I'm doing an every request unnecessarily. So, um, let's see. How do, the next step in Mafia is A for analyze. So once you're looking at a, at a profiler output, which is a call graph and some other metadata, you're going you're gonna to look at it and say, what is being slow? What are the, the low-hanging fruits? There's always some. I mean, if you haven't run a profiler before in a code base, uh, chances are there are things that you're going to be able to spot within a pretty short amount of time. Uh, and so look for things that are easy to fix, and then look for things that are just clear bottlenecks. So focus on the, the big wins. Uh, in our experience, the things we found in that category are slow calculations that should be cached, like if you're rendering a whole menu on every single page uh, and then you're not caching that for some reason, uh, that's a problem. So Drupal Core does this, but what if you have a contrib module that renders a mega menu? That's going to be an issue that probably dogs some of those sites. Uh, slow SQL statements, uh, that's, that's a big one. Uh, not, not too much in Drupal, actually. I think Drupal has enough complexity that it's usually in the application layer. But once you've optimized that away, then you're going to have a bottleneck in the database. Um, web requests, like if you have microservices, uh, sometimes we see unnecessary entity loads, there's too many of them, and, and lots of things like that that we could just go on. Another subtle thing that you're going to need to be aware of is that sometimes there is no obvious bottleneck, but the page is still clearly slow, or the site is still clearly slow, and you're trying to figure out why. And oftentimes, there's a server environment that's a play, and, uh, and so you have to, the profiling tool won't show you this, Aside from the fact that there's no bottleneck, that's what it'll show you. But you might have like swapping if you're out of RAM. Uh, on our dev environments, we, we use Vagrant, and at, at some point we're using VirtualBox shared folders. And so our dev sites were just every function call was slow because it was trying to like load the load the code base off of, of a of a badly implemented file system. Um, other processes running on the same server. Maybe you didn't install opcache, so keep that in mind too. Um, okay, the next step in Mafia is F for fix. So make a change uh, and see if it helps. So it's very important to do a comparison, especially in Drupal, which is very complex. You don't know the whole code base. You don't know exactly if you, if you optimize something and hook in it. Who knows that uh, maybe during page rendering time, you got rid of 
uh, a slow query, but during page rendering, we need the results of that query anyway, and that would have been statically cached, and now it's not, so it's just gonna run that query again. So you think you just saved 100 milliseconds, but really, you just moved it from here to there. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's an important thing to consider. Next step of uh, Mafia is I for iterate, which means uh, keep measuring again. You've made a fix, you've confirmed that this helps. Now, don't stop, because there's gonna be more more things to look at, more things to fix. Of course, at some point, you're gonna have to know when to stop, what is fast enough, and that goes back to user expectations, uh, you know, performance analysis of like your, your infrastructure, and, uh, and that intuition that I was just telling you, you gotta build up. Like, you have to learn what the numbers mean for each site and how that translates into what your business goals are. Um, another thing to, to keep in mind is please uh, try to log your runs, try to keep detailed notes depending on the tool. Like if you use something like Blackfire, that makes it easy for you to keep a historical record of all your profiles. Uh, if you used XHProf, that wasn't particularly organized, there was no way of labeling them. And so after uh, a day of using XHProf a few years back, I remember just saying, <laughs> what the hell do I do with all these? So log, log your runs and, and keep in mind uh, what, to, what you're comparing. Um, and the next uh, thing in Mafia is, I actually couldn't come up with an A. I don't know if anyone here in the room uh, <laughs> can, can do better. So, so we, I even used the thesaurus.com for, no, nothing. Uh, so, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, so that was the, the theory, and I just wanna circle back and talk about the, the tools. Um, so for, for front end, which is that next session somewhere over there. You've got, uh, we always just start using Chrome developer tools, but there's a whole suite of tools that help you figure that out. So go, go learn that. And, and in my opinion, that's just as important as the back end. It's, it's, it's yin and yang of, of optimization of your page loading time. Uh, so don't, don't forget, you know, even if you're a back end developer, you need to be aware about front end performance. Um, once you actually want to benchmark a given page, usually looking at it once isn't enough. You gotta get a bunch of runs. So we, we often use tools like Apache Bench or JMeter, which is much more complicated. Apache Bench just says, hit this URL this many times with this level of concurrency. JMeter lets you script. It's a Java program that lets you record and script and replay logs of real visitors. So that's a great tool as well to, to get an intuition for how, how your infrastructure can handle the load and how long it takes. Um, there's, a, there's a new category of tools out there called APM, Application Performance Monitoring, uh, the most prominent tool is New Relic, and, and that's kind of a mix between server monitoring and, and getting a picture inside your actual application. It knows about SQL queries, it, it, it can, can give you charts of, in production, of exactly what your Drupal site is trying to do. Uh, this is great for figuring out why the hell your server just crashed, uh, and we highly recommend you use it. On the other hand, it's not always that helpful for optimizing the specific bottlenecks. So that's where the next uh, phase of tools come in, which is a PHP profiler. The most prominent one that everyone's been using is X XHProf. I bet most of the people in this room who profiled use XHProf. Yeah, yeah, so we've been using that for years and it's, it's pretty good, it was made by Facebook, but it's kind of showing its age. So uh, the one we're talking about today is Blackfire, which is uh, kind of a huge improvement on it. All right, so what is, uh, what is Blackfire? It's, uh, it was created by Fabian, who, uh, who's actually in the room, or at least he was a second ago. Fabian? All right, and uh, Fabian's also the creator of Symphony and Twig. Um, it was started as a fork of XHProf, so eventually it became its own beast, and, and most of it, or all of it, was rewritten. But uh, from a user perspective, what does it give you over XHProf? It gives you a much simpler installation, so you actually have less excuse not to use it all the time. Uh, much better docs, uh, a far nicer call graph that you can actually zoom in on easily, uh, and a better just user experience, like all these annoyances that you had looking at XHProf, like for example, the logging of the runs, like and not being able to compare things and label things, that's, that's a little tweak that makes a big difference. Uh, another important thing is it supports comparisons. It's actively maintained. Uh, I'm, as far as I'm aware, they, they don't have a version of XHProf that works with PHP 7. Blackfire already's got one. Uh, and these guys just are building the product and making it a fun experience to use. Um, and uh, it's, it's not an open source tool, but like GitHub, it's the base level is free. What XHProf gave you, gave you that's free and a lot more. And then at the same time, at an enterprise level there, you know, if you're using this all the time for a large team, that's when you wanna go premium. Um, so the first, uh, the first case study we'd like to do is uh, for McGill University, and my colleague Dave will uh, lead you through it. Thanks. Hey 
Hey. So uh, now that you know about Blackfire, I'm going to show you how to actually use it. First of all, how many people here have actually used Blackfire before? All right, great. It'll be, well, yeah. <laughs> the guys in the red shirts don't yeah. count. <laughs> So great, you're going to learn something. So we're going to talk about uh, the McGill University uh, website that lists all the courses and programs that students have to take. Uh, and this is a really important site to, uh, to profile because this is this every, uh, every fall when school's about to start, about the day before the deadline for registering, all the students suddenly realize, oh my god, I have to fix this. I have to register for my courses. And if the site was slow, it would just go down. That would be pretty bad. Uh, also, it's a search-driven UI in many cases, so we can't just enable caching. It has to run well, even uncached. So I'll show you a page here. Here's one of this. We have this running in our dev environment. And uh, it's a reasonably OK web page. And I'll show you how to do a profile with it. So we have our Blackfire uh, Chrome extension installed. And all we have to do is hit profile, and there will be a live profile. So please, the gods of presentations, be on my side. And so it does a bunch of things, profiles the page, and then it sits around loading. Oh, there we go. And now we have a profile to view. So I click on it, and I go to the Blackfire site. And so this is hosted on Blackfire servers. And it's available for you to share with other people in your team, which is, yeah, I'll get there, which is another nice feature of Blackfire. And so this is a pretty complex interface for the first time you see it. It's, it's much more complex in some ways than XHProf. But it's also got a lot more functionality. So I'll give you a brief tour of like, how all these things work. Along the top, we have all the different metrics for the global run of your program. So this says that your program took 225 milliseconds of total time. This one is network and disk time. This is CPU time. This is memory. Uh, this, this one's for uh, network and HTTP requests that are done by your program. So this is great. You get an immediate overview of what happens. What's your, what's your uh, website doing? And you can say, is 225 milliseconds too slow? Then I really have to look at it. If it's not too slow, then you can be happy, and you can go on to another page. In the center of the page here, which I can zoom in on, you have a call graph. And so what this does is, so when your program starts, when your Drupal program starts, it starts running index.php. And then index calls some functions. It calls menu execute active handler, for example. But it calls other things, too. We can see it calls Drupal bootstrap over here. And so this provides a graph of every function that's important in your program, every one that takes a reasonable amount of time, and what other functions it calls. It's really great because it lets you both zoom in on things, lets you see what exactly did this function call, but it also lets you get, get an overall view of like, what does the structure of your program look like. You can see in many cases, just by looking at it, once you get the hang of it, that, oh yeah, there's a lot of recursive calls happening here. And that's a really good way to, to learn your way around a code base that you haven't seen before. Uh, you can also see that for each, each little box here, each function, it shows you how, what percentage of the time it took and how many times it was called. So this one is called, takes 50% of the time and is called once. But there's more detailed information on each function on the left-hand side here, which is a list of all the functions. For each one, it says how many times it was called and how much time it took, uh, both exclusive and inclusive time. So here you can see how much time each function, the functions ordered, but how much time each one took. And then you can also zoom in on them. You can see exactly how much time this, one this function took, node page, view, node page view. But an important thing here is that it shows you what that one called here as a list of different things. And that these boxes here are different from the ones here, because this one shows you how much time node show took, only the times that it was called by node page view. While the box here for node show, wherever it is, would show you how, many times, how much time it took when it was called uh, from anywhere in your program. So it's a useful uh, differentiation to know about. OK, so now that you know what the interface looks like, let's see what's going on here and what's making this page slow. You can see in the, uh, in the call graph here that some things are in red. And those are the, the, what they call the hot paths, the things about your program that are particularly slow. And so we'll look at one of those. We can see here that one of the things that's taking a while is theme, the theme function. That's really normal in Drupal. That's OK. But then we can see that there's a bunch of things that theme calls. And one of them is here, is a preprocessed page hook for the theme. It's pretty unusual for a preprocessed page hook to take 13% of your total load time. That's not good. So we'll look at this one a little more. We can follow it down through other things that it calls. It calls Drupal get form. Eventually, it calls some stuff for the search box. And finally, we get down to here. 
which is a, a function in a custom class called load academic faculty nodes. And we can see this function was called twice, but it does 36 calls to node load. That's usually a bad sign. You shouldn't be calling node load that many times. And that explains why this function is taking so much time. So we can look at the code for this function now, now that we've been prompted by Blackfire. So we'll look at the code, and we'll see what this function does is indeed, it goes through a list of faculties, and for each one it calls node load. That's, that's a bad idea in Drupal. It, this code comes from Drupal 6, where there wasn't any other option. Um, but now in Drupal 7, we have node load multiple. That lets you load multiple nodes all at the same time and do uh, one query to get all the fields, or to get each field of all the different nodes at once. So we can really easily fix this. We can just change our code so it goes through the faculties, collects the NIDs instead of loading each one, and then loads all the nodes all at once with node load multiple. And this is a lot faster. When we did this, hmm? oh. Um, this is an anonymous view with uh, caching turned off so that we can profile it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. So you need to install a Blackfire plugin and give it your credentials. Hmm? Yeah, on your server. So you can't just do it on every single page anywhere. If only. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> Guys, uh, we have a feature request. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so you can see now that uh, this function now takes a really small amount of time. It takes only four milliseconds, which is almost nothing. So we saved about 25 milliseconds. This fix took under an hour the first time we did it, and it had a measurable effect on our site. Uh, so we think this illustrates how easy it is to get started using Blackfire and why you should start. And now Alex will continue. Real quick, what's the start representation? Can you pull up a slide on installing Blackfire? <laughs> Great, great that you asked. I actually had all the components listed out, and, and uh, my colleague Dave forced me to take it out. Um, so there's a, you got to install a, a PHP, an extent, a PHP extension that's super lightweight, super minimal, called a probe. It's written in C, and all that does is, is it instruments each function and sends that data over an HTTP socket to the Blackfire agent, which is a, a an actual little application running, listening in a port, compiling all that, and then sending that over to the Blackfire servers. Yeah, so for, for everybody else, the question was, is there a partnership with, with Acquia? Uh, yeah, yeah, for the hosting. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll just answer to, to, to be faster. Uh, they, I know I talked to Mike Myers from Acquia. He's aware of, of Blackfire, and, uh, and he said that uh, they've got that in their backlog right now. And he said, uh, I want to I hear cu more customers uh, asking for this integration, and then I'll bump that up on my agenda. So. So please, uh, you know what to do. <laughs> All right, and uh, so you install Blackfire. One of the great selling points of this, uh, I'm, not, I'm not selling it, but one of the great selling points <laughs> for me was it's easy to install. They give you a really slick page that like, you copy and paste four or five lines like this. They, they, it's offered for Mac, Ubuntu, Red Hat, even Windows. I don't know how they did it, but didn't try. Um, <laughs> So it even, like if you're logged in, you just have to log into GitHub with GitHub to sign up. It takes a second. Uh, they give you the server ID and the server token. Uh, so you just copy and paste all that from one page, and you've got that installed on your, on your site. If you run it in Docker, that works just as well, or you can run it directly in, on your Mac. Um, so that shouldn't hold you back from trying it. Um, now I want to cover some, some more interesting features. We already talked about uh, the need to have baseline baselines and, and comparison from before and after. And uh, although we had to cut this from our demo, uh, Blackfire makes, Chrome extension makes it really easy to, uh, to say, hey, this profile I'm about to make, label it like this and make it a reference that I'm going to compare with later. And then after you run that second profile and then you say compare it with this previous reference, it'll generate a call graph of diffs. Every single function that appears in this new call graph of diffs, it shows you the how much was saved or, or lost in terms of performance improvements. And that's, that's amazing, and, and, and this is a key feature. Uh, another, another really handy feature is uh, they have a command line 
app, a uh, command line tool called Blackfire Client that, uh, that you can use for AJAX requests, for things with cookies, for post requests, for, for testing web services. And, uh, and we're going to show that later. But one of, one of the specific use cases for that is to, is to uh, profile Drush. So what you got to do is you got to run Blackfire Run. That's the client. And then you type in whatever PHP command you were going to type command line, in this case, Drush Launcher CC all. In case you're wondering, we say Drush Launcher instead of Drush because Drush, the overall executable forks. Uh, and, and that'll fool the, if you fork, that'll fool the profiler. So we got to use the inner tool, Drush Launcher. Another key feature is that these profiles, because they're uploaded to, this, to the service, you can share them with your colleagues, with your friends. You can, if you write a blog post like we did about it, you can share it with the world. Um, so this is really going to make it easier to have a conversation about how to profile and what's slow on your site. So that's, that's a really uh, key win. Um, another mini case study, we had to shorten this for you guys, sorry, was for this client X. Uh, and you know, it's, it's always like this. The clients who have the most to gain from profiling are the ones who don't want to talk about profiling. So they're rena remain, rename, remaining anonymous. Um, so the issue was their homepage is sometimes taking five, 600 milliseconds, sometimes a minute to render for anonymous users with varnish in front of it. And that's, that's not right. A second. Uh, sorry, a second. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I think if you take in the front end resources, it was a minute, but that's a different conversation. Um, so first thing we did is we opened Chrome's network tab, and we looked, and we were like, ha, look at that. More than half the time for the back end rendering, at least on my laptop, was, uh, was spent doing a 302 redirect from the home page to slash en for some sort of a, a language default setting. I don't know what kind of complex logic they're doing, but it shouldn't take 357 milliseconds to figure out that the, the browser language is English. And uh, let's look at that. Uh, we don't know anything about the code base, so uh, let's use Blackfire to, to sort of give us this x-ray of this unknown code base for a consulting client. It wasn't, it wasn't something that we wrote. Uh, so we go into Chrome, we right-click copy as curl. You've all done that? Uh, oh yeah, this is a redirect request. The Chrome extension uh, will get fooled, right? Because when you, when you actually go to the home page, it'll redirect to slash en, and then the, the URL that you can activate Blackfire on is already slash en, and so your Blackfire uh, thing won't, won't actually catch the first half of that loading time. So that's a little gotcha. So right now we open that uh, inspector, the network tab of Chrome DevTools, we copy as curl. Who's done this here? Copy as curl? Yeah, this, this is a handy feature. We, we, debug with it all the time. What it's going to look like is everything after that Blackfire thing. So like curl, URL, all the HTTP headers, including the cookie, like everything. If you want to be logged in, you're logged in. Um, and then we preface Blackfire with that. And then that tells the Blackfire command line tool to add extra HTTP headers to, to tell the server, hey, this request needs to be profiled and instrumented and uploaded to Blackfire.io. It does its magic. It's a command line thing, and it actually shows you a little summary. Then it, uh, it gives you a URL for the graph. We don't have time to look at the call graph, but uh, right away we noticed in the hot path was this lovely thing, a, a theme hook, TQ preprocess page that calls Drupal go to after doing a little bit of language logic. OK, does anybody see something wrong with this picture? You probably shouldn't be doing. Uh, a simple redirect inside of a theme preprocess hook. By then, you've rendered the whole page and, and you've gone through everything. You want to move that up as soon as possible. In this case, it was, it was quite trivial to move it to hook and knit and, and just save, I don't know, like 320 out of those 350 milliseconds. Um, so that was an easy win. On this particular client, there was like four other easy wins with caching of mega menus and all that that we also did. Uh, so there was a, there was a, lot, a lot to optimize. Um, we got a much better performance, and uh, of course we have to compare the benchmark, and like I said, it was from 350 to 74. Uh, so, and we didn't know anything about the code base at the time, so having a tool like Blackfire to show us a picture is, is very helpful. Uh, I got a few more tips for you. Um, one of the nice things about Blackfire is that when you do a profile of a, of a page, it'll actually load that page 10 times and average the result. That's called aggregation. Uh, sometimes that's great because it controls for caching and stuff, you know, like, otherwise you'll have really crazy variability. One time you're looking at a, at a profile and it has this many milliseconds, and other times it's that many milliseconds, and, and you don't actually know what you're looking for, what you're comparing. So having this average makes you a lot more sane. 
compared to what we had to do with XHProf. Other times, it will confuse you because you need to profile the uncached behavior or, or just that one specific request. Like if you know what you're doing, so sometimes you've got to use that checkbox that they have in the Chrome extension that says, when kicking off this profile, disable aggregation. And that's what it means. It says do it only once. Um, this will also explain why sometimes it says a function was called 2.5 times. Uh, it's, it, or it's whatever. It's because it was averaging. Sometimes it was called two. Sometimes it was called three. Um, another thing to remind you is that uh, Blackfire doesn't keep function arguments. So every time the theme function is called, it measures it and pulls it all together as for that little box for a theme. Whether it was like theme table or, or theme page, all of those calls are pulled into one. If you need to help you debug and figure out what's going on. If you need to separate that out, uh, Blackfire does have an extra feature that lets you sort of separate one function call to have separate notes for that. But that's in Pro. Um, okay, another tip is xDebug. First, we we think that profiling is, is is a great first pass to figure out a code base, but after you do that, you're going to have to read the code, and if it's complex enough, you're going to have to step through it in, in a debugger. We use xDebug and PHP Storm. Um, so that's that's a great combination. Unfortunately, xDebug completely skews profiling, so you've got to turn that off every time you run Blackfire, and turn it back on when you want to use it, and turn it back off. So I think they're working on optimizing that, but as far as we know, you've got to restart Apache a lot. Um, there's also a profiling overhead to consider. Uh, when you're looking at the numbers from your benchmark tool and you're looking at the numbers from your inside of Blackfire, there's a, typically Blackfire is going to be a bit slower because it's instrumenting everything. We find it sometimes between 20 milliseconds, sorry, 20% and 100% of the request. So it is substantial enough for you to keep in mind. It varies. But we, despite this variability, we did still find that it's consistent enough to not be such a huge problem. Just keep it in mind. But it's consistent, it skews everything kind of equally because every function call. So it's, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, another important uh, consideration for using a profiler to optimize is the fundamental computer science trade-off of, of uh, data structure versus running time, or, or mem in this case, memory usage versus running time. If you, if you say, hey, this mega menu is loading too slowly, we're, we gotta cache it. And we're gonna, because we're using it in three places in, through the request, so we're gonna have a static cache. Well, you just added, a meg or whatever, half a meg to your memory usage for that request. And, and if, you, if you took an intro to computer science algorithms course, uh, they, they will always tell you about like in-place algorithms are slower, data structures are faster, but they have a higher memory requirement. And there's, there's a fundamental trade-off here in profiling as well. Um, another key thing that we discovered that we never saw in any blog posts or docs uh, is the fact that the Blackfire SDK, which is a like a set of PHP classes that you can manually include in, in, in Drupal or your, or your own PHP app, uh, has an enable probe and a disable probe method that says start profiling from this point on and end profiling here. And what that'll allow you to do is sort of like have a micro profile of just that code section to deal with that pooling of different calls to theme and the like if you want to debug it. Uh, it's, it's a dangerous tool because uh, it doesn't show you the whole picture, so you can use it to figure out what, what, what's going on in a particular section of the code, but make sure to run the profile again after you've made your fix on the whole site to make sure that the difference is actually helpful. Uh, and uh, I think the most interesting case study that, that we have for you today is for our own site in, in D8, and Dave will, will cover that. Okay, it's on. <laughs> All right, so we upgraded our site to D8. Uh, we talked about it at a couple of Drupal camps, and so you can go see a presentation that we gave about that. Uh, it's on the internet. And we really like D8, actually. There's a lot of cool features. We love views. We love CK Editor. We love Twig. We love all these features, but there's a little problem. It's slower than D7, and that makes Kitty sad. So here's a page on our site, the view of blog posts that was slower than we'd like. Um, it's actually really fast when we cache it, because Drupal 8 has built-in page cache and dynamic page cache and all these great things. So when it's cached, uh, it loads in like 40 milliseconds and we're happy. But every time we edit a node, that invalidates Drupal 8's cache tags, including the node list one. So the view has to do all its queries all over again, it has to render things all over again, and it takes a while, it takes a few hundred milliseconds, which is way longer than we want and longer than it took in D7. So we did some profiling to try and figure out what was going on, and we encountered a problem here that, um, as Alex mentioned, Blackfire does aggregation. It'll hit your site 10 times. But if you're trying to look at uncached behavior specifically, this is a problem, because the first time it hits your site, it's uncached, and after that, everyone's cached, and so you can't focus in on the uncached behavior. 
You could just disable aggregation, but we don't want to do that in this case because it'll make our results inconsistent. We'll profile once and we'll get one number. We'll profile a second time, we'll get a different number. So what we want to do is to keep aggregation on, but find a way to focus on uncached behavior. So we found a cute trick to do that. Symphony and Drup now Drupal 8 has this concept of an event subscriber that can listen for events that happen on your site. And one of the events it can listen for is when I first see a request. It should do something. So we added an event subscriber that listens for requests. And as soon as a request comes into the site, it pretends that it just edited a node by invalidating some cache tags. And you can see what the code looks like here. It's pretty simple. And so what this does is every time we, we, load, uh, we go to our site, uh, we pretend that we just edited this node, and we get the uncached behavior. Uh, don't commit this. It'll make your site terrible. But it's really nice for profiling. So we ran a profile, and we found out that the reason why our site was slow, at least one of the reasons, was actually in core this time. It wasn't our own stuff. Um, there's a function called get visible blocks per region that figures out which blocks should be visible on your site and where they should go. And this is a really important function, because it doesn't just run uh, once in a while. It runs on every single page. Even if big, when you're using BigPipe, it still has to figure out what block should be where. So, uh, so yeah, it runs all the time. And it's really slow on our site. It was taking. 117 milliseconds, which is a bit over a, uh, a fifth of the total site loading time. So that doesn't make us very happy. And it sort of makes sense that it takes so long. Whoops. It sort of makes sense that it takes so long because we have so many blocks on our site. We have like 130 blocks, but that's pretty normal for Drupal 8. There's a ton of things that are blocks, and uh, I don't think it should be unusual to have that kind of that, that quantity, and it definitely shouldn't slow your site down this much. So when we looked at this function, at this get visible blocks per region function, uh, we found out what it was doing. It was loading every single block for your theme, uh, getting them all from your config and from the database, which already takes a lot of time, because it's loading all these blocks just to check if it should show them or not. And then for each one, it has to check whether it should be visible using a bunch of different conditions, like what does the page uh, path look like? What kind of node are you viewing? Uh, who, what user is visiting the site now? And it's a pretty complex set of conditions that involves uh, a bunch of different metadata, and it takes a long time to compute. So this kind of sounded familiar to us, because we have the whole uh, node access system in Drupal. If you're, loading, if you're looking at one node in Drupal, it'll load the node and do an access check. But if you're, you want to look at a whole list of nodes, that would be way too slow to load every one just to find out if it can be seen. So instead, it, uses, it stores a bunch of information in the database and uses a single database query to figure out what should be visible. So we built something that does that for blocks. We called it block access records. And it does a single DB query to figure out what should be visible. Uh, you can see we did a comparison profile here. And it saved 80 milliseconds on our site for every single uncached request. And it has enough stuff built in that it should work on most other Drupal sites out there. So uh, we hope you'll help us try to get something like this in core later, because we think it would be a great improvement for Drupal. All right. So if you remember from that earlier, uh, earlier slide about how long things took, uh, that was the two-day uh, optimization exercise. Uh, so that's, that's clearly a non-trivial module, and it'll be non-trivial to in in integrate it with core. But uh, I, I was talking to Vim the other day, Vim Lears, and he, he was quite interested in that. So maybe that'll be Dave's claim to fame in one day. Um, all right, and uh, we want to quickly cover the fact that while Blackfire is an amazing profiling tool, uh, I think uh, yesterday I was talking to Fabian, and he, he said it's, more, it's much more than that, or his vision for the tool is it's, it's really about application performance management because he wants it to be something that you run on every commit, you generate the profile, you integrate that as part of your deployment and uh, an ongoing process. So this is where Blackfire Premium really comes in. It, it sets up a notion of environments with team members who can share profiles amongst themselves. It'll have more generous uh, data retention policies. You, you're, you're encouraged to set up assertions uh, and testing scenarios with different pages. Uh, you, it's got CI integration. It's got Slack notifications. It's, it's got custom metrics that you can define for those assertions. And it even uh, has a lot of built-in PHP recommendations saying you're not doing this common optimization, do it, like such as install the Twig C extension. I don't know how many specific ones they have for Drupal for these recommendations. That would be nice to have more. Uh, but the one that always runs in our profiles that we see is uh, t you have more than 10 SQL queries, and that's not optimal. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> give, them, give them suggestions for what's appropriate for uh, Drupal, so it'll make the tool better and make all of our lives easier. Great. Uh, and uh, recently they announced an on-premise version if you work for a huge enterprise that will never think of uh, sharing these profiles with a different organization, that's, that's an option as well. They've got a Blackfire booth and they're, uh, they're here to both answer your questions that I cannot answer and, uh, and also to help you install the tool and try it today. So please uh, take advantage of them while they're here. Um, that same marketing advisor that I've got told me I need more calls to action everywhere on, on the websites and presentations. So here are the calls to action for this presentation. Um, first, uh, please fill out the feedback form so that we get invited back to speak at DrupalCon if you liked it. If you didn't like this presentation, Forget pretend, yeah, you didn't see the slide. Um, there's, uh, there's code spritz going on tomorrow. That's, you guys are back-end PHP developers and we need your help. Uh, Dave will be doing IETN migrate stuff. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. So please, please come to the convention center and participate. Uh, follow me and Dave on Twitter if you're trying to learn how to use that. Uh, there's a Blackfire booth with, with actual PHP superstars. And uh, we, should, we should also mention, here's a link to the block access records module that you guys should check out. Uh, we wrote some blog posts about Blackfire here uh, for both Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. We got another case study that we didn't even talk about. Uh, and, uh, and we have a, a talk that we did at Midcamp about upgrading to D8 for our site. Maybe that's interesting for some of you. Um, Suzanne, my, my colleague, uh, has, has a great training program that she runs. Uh, so if you guys need Drupal training, uh, or your team, probably not for, for people who are here, but for your teammates who are both for content authoring, theming, intro to module development, we've got that. Uh, I'd like to invite you all warmly to uh, Drupal North next month in Montreal. Montreal is beautiful in June. So as you see, it's, it's all <laughs> purple and pink. So please come. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a great regional summit. And uh, actually, just one more thing. You shouldn't have left, that guy who just left. Um, the, the folks are from Blackfire uh, were very excited that, that we were giving this talk, and, and, they meant, and they reached out to us, and they said, hey, uh, we're going to be at your talk. We're going to answer all the more advanced questions. So Fabian is here. Nicola was one of the key uh, developers for Blackfire is here. And, uh, and they even uh, generously offered to give out this book, 24 Days of Blackfire, that actually uh, I picked up in DrupalCon Asia, and I got so excited about it that uh, I was inspired to give this talk. So basically, everything I I covered, I stole from this book. So you might as well <laughs> might as well get your copy here. So uh, that's uh, that's our presentation. And and at this point, we'll take questions. And and thanks a lot. And and I think uh, Fabian will will take most of the questions. <laughs> Anybody? No, in fact, I, I, yeah, so the question is, is there a conflict with, with New Relic and Blackfire uh, and running them both on the same server? And not only did I get a no, but earlier I, I learned that there's an integration. So if, you're, if, you're, if you have New Relic installed, I think they'll, they'll integrate with Blackfire as well. So that's, that's a great combination. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, I don't believe, XHProf has a heat, okay, so does Blackfire have a heat map? I know XHProf does, as far as I know Blackfire doesn't. I, I'll, have to, I'll have to punt to them why that's, that wasn't a priority. <laughs> I couldn't hear that, sorry. Hear, yeah. Not really a question, but it's a recommendation. Um, so AppNet and TraceView, they're similar to New Relic. Mm -hmm. um, they have a heat map functionality. Great. So if, if I, you mentioned that Blackfire integrates with New Relic, so if there's a future integration for TraceView, okay. that's something can happen there. Awesome. Good. Good. Thank you. Real quick. All right. Yeah. I use AppNet, okay? It's fantastic because it also has uh, trace debug and it includes all the Drupal hooks as well. Oh, as super. Oops. We'll try it. Thanks okay. a lot. Uh, anybody else? we got uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, all right. Well, th in that case, thanks so much. We'll be around. And more, yeah, cheers. And, and more importantly, go talk to the guys in the, in the red shirts, get your book, and, and ask them the more difficult questions. Thanks.